What is up, fellow YouTubers? I'm gonna have to mute my mic right quick. There we go. Chilling out on uh, Discord after our, another episode of KeeperCast. And as I advertised on KeeperCast, I'm making another dank ass burger for YouTube. And this time, this is the ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger. And you're gonna see why I call it that. So, we creep into the kitchen here for a second. We got everything set up. We got some Texas toast and the pan's going. This time I turned the stove up to seven. It's not quite high, but not quite low. So it'll cook a little faster on everything, but it's not at a ridiculous heat. To start off with our Texas toast, we're gonna take our seasoning. And we're gonna sprinkle it. Sprinkle it like a cobra spits venom. I'll show you this technique. And you can re-pour your lid full of seasoning. You don't have to, you know what I'm saying, have a shit ton on there. Pour too much seasoning on your lid and you go to sprinkle it and you get a shit ton of seasoning on there. It's like, nah, dude, fuck that. Just a light sprinkle. So, like I barely even move my wrist and that's what you're looking at right there which means this side goes down first and all that delicious grease that I've used in, from the burgers in the past oh yeah this is gonna be our bottom bun and again you just sprinkle it just like that go ahead and do the same thing to this side And this is the process you want to repeat for sprinkling your seasoning on your beef, your sausage, your egg, your bacon. Now you could use the spatula to flip your bread, but if you're just ballsy enough, you can grab it by your hands and just, you know what I'm saying? But if you're going to use your hands to flip your toast, be very careful on burning yourself. I would not encourage it. I would encourage you to use your spatula through the entire process, but... I'm showing off. Now all the bacon and the burger and the sausage grease that I have at the bottom of this pan is soaked into it. So when it heats back up, it acts as a lubricant. It keeps the bread and the patties from sticking and adds flavor to it. So it's like, dude, you're killing multiple birds here with them stones. Mm -hmm. I have to mute my microphone on Discord so I can make this quick YouTube video. Now I'm going to move this bun to the side so we can make room for our bottom bun. Now once we get our, our buns toasted up nice and fresh, that's got a nice toast te texture to it. There we go. Eh, that's not quite there. Like I said, I got the stove turned on to a seven, which is a little bit above medium heat, just a little bit above. Okay, that looks pretty good. Go a little bit longer. Not too much longer. There we go, look how nicely that toasted up. Um, yeah, there we go. And then to repeat the process with our bun once more. And this is pretty standard for how I usually prepare the buns for my burgers on YouTube, is that method right here. Now I have a little bit for the burger patty that we're gonna lay down for it next. And as you can see, all the grease got into the bottom of that bun right there, toasted in there, and then that's, this side's toasted nicely. But I'm being for real though, YouTube, these, after the buns are toasted, I'll get this out of the way, I'll make assembling the sandwich 
much nicer and much quicker. You're on another episode of Cooking with King Cobra, and today we're making the ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger. Dankness for your face. So now I'm liking that toast action. That's what you're looking for right there. Fluffy. Lightly toasted. Yeah, buddy. Now this right here is bar food. Plain and simple dankness for your face. Hmm. That's just about there. A little bit longer. And of course, when you're heating up the grease in that pan, all the meats and what have you that you've cooked in the past start waffling through the air. It's like, ooh, yeah, now we're talking. Right there. Not, a little bit of brown on the edge, but not too much. Nice and lightly toasted to perfection. That's some good looking toast for your burger. Now that pan's nice and heated up, it's time to uh, get ourselves some beef. Start building this beast. Last two might be stuck together. So I'll have to get a new thong. That's fine. But for the sake of the video, to move things along quickly, we'll open the fresh bag, let those other two de thaw. We got some 100% pure beef patties, 80% lean, 20% fat. So it's less fattening, it's a little bit healthier in content. Fish a patty out. Put this back in the freezer. Now that same sprinkle method that we sh done did on this here toast is going to be applied to the burger. Just a light coating of seasoning. Get that paper off of there, just like that. And we're going to hit it with our Tonys with a nice light coating. Put that season side down first. There we go. That'll give us a little bit for our sausage, but not too much. So I'm gonna add some more seasoning to that lid so I'll have some for the sausage, the egg, and the bacon, but not too much seasoning now. Now, if you can get another seasoning to go with this, I would definitely recommend Head County Championship Seasoning to go with your Tony's seasoning. The combination of those two is perfect. But I ran out of that stuff. There we go. Yeah, I don't need a whole lot in there. And now we get you up into that flip action with this burger recipe. Now being as this is the top bun, this is the bottom bun, we're going to move this side and this bun out of the way temporarily so that when I transfer the burger to this bottom bun right here, I can station it. Get that out of the way right there, there we go. And now comes the sexiness of this delicious food porn for YouTube, where we come in and cook the beef, the sausage, and the bacon are next, in that order. And then that way, the bacon creates a nice crevice, so when you go to put your easy side, sunny side egg, on top of that bacon, boom. 
This is literally gonna be breakfast and one sandwich. So yeah, I'm gonna show you how to make some deliciousness on YouTube. You guys gotta flip. When you flip your burger, you wanna avoid getting grease all over the place. You're not SpongeBob fucking SquarePants, so just whoop, like that. There we go. This ain't the crusty fucking crab over here, so if you want to avoid getting grease all over your stove, you don't have to like, oh, look at me showing off on YouTube, you know, fuck that. Flipping it high in the air is just going to splatter grease all over your stove. And the suckiest part about cooking is cleaning up after yourself. The best part about cooking is eating your delicious creation. The least favorite part about it is the cleanup. You know what I'm saying? But having that on the seven is not going to take too long to cook that up. Oh uh, yeah, look at that sexy sizzle action going on. Now these patties are preformed, but the sausage I use for this burger is not preformed, so I have to squeeze it out of the sausage tube and form a patty with it and then cook the fucking patty to put on top of the burger. Now this burger is going to be a little bit on the spicy side, but not too bad. Um, they make non-spicy variants of the sausage and the sauce that I use for this burger, which is a spicy horseradish mustard and mayonnaise. They make regular brown mustard and mayonnaise, so and they also make a non-spicy sausage. So if you're not a fan of the heat, you know. Now, I've already did this recipe before. It's good. In fact, it was so good, I'm like, I gotta show you two how to make this deliciousness right here. That burger patty is just about done. Beef is what's for dinner. It'll look like a double cheeseburger when it's all said and done. But that second patty is going to be sausage. And you got beef, sausage, bacon, and egg going on to one burger. That's basically a... And then the toast, because what's toast without some eggs? You know what I'm saying? That sort of thing. So this is basically a complete breakfast in one sandwich. Now it's okay if your beef is a little bit pink in the middle, but this is a nice consistency right here with the coloration of that beef. That's just about done. For a visual, check out that burger sizzle because this burger is gonna taste so good. You'd be saying, "Damn, this burger is the shizzle." I'm gonna carry the plate over here so I don't get grease all over the stove if I can help it. Gently shake it off the spatula right there. Oh yeah. And just to make sure that's nice and center, we'll go ahead and give that a slight push. There we go. Oh man, the flavor coming off that grease with that patty. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Next ingredients. We got some Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. This is the hot and spicy version. Legitly. Show that logo. Free advertising, baby. This is good shite right here, YouTube. Oh, there we go. Transfer it right there. Awesome sauce. And We'll put the same amount of the seasoning. There be that we'll use the same amount of seasoning throughout the entire recipe. Open it up and to form a sausage patty for your burger. You know, you take a little a little dollop of it, squeeze it out of the tube like toothpaste, and uh, yeah. And squeeze it out like that. 
Now, I'm not putting it on the burger because I don't want raw food to make contact with it. I'm just checking it for science reference. I have my finger pointing at that container of sausage and it tipped over. That was awesome. Yeah, now we could probably get away with putting a, a little bit more sausage in that patty. So we got this massive wad of Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage. And I want to take and squeeze it as thin as possible. It'll cook it faster. There we go. It's not too thick, not too thin. Hit it with that seasoning. Just a light coating. Season side first. Booyah! That same amount of seasoning we've been using so far. You're repeating that step multiple times with a recipe like this. There we go. Probably dump some of this back because we don't need that much seasoning for the bacon or the egg. And while that cooks up, I'm going to make sure that none of our food is getting wasted here. And therefore, we're going to squeeze that back into the tube. You got to take your finger and kind of stuff it back down into the tube so that way you can store it in your fridge without wasting it. I know that just looks wrong as fuck, but get your mind out of the gutter, sick fucks. Keep my food safe. And once you get to a certain point, it's just like reversing a gogurt tube, really. Just like reversing a gogurt tube, you want to squeeze it back down into there. As best as you can. But in some cases, I might just take some tin foil and, you know, wrap it up and store it. Because there's like a little excess right here, you know. So I'll go ahead and store that. Wrap that, wrap that in some tin foil and store it in the fridge. Be sure, be sure it gets used up as quickly as possible once you open it. I'll wash my hands off real quick. Let's get you up close on that sizzle action with that sausage. And like I said, not a whole lot of seasoning in on this. Just this light sprinkle. Whip it. Whip it good. <clears throat> Sometimes you can press it down to cook it a little bit faster, but then all the juice gets squeezed out, so... I'll let it do its thing. <clears throat> now remember when I showed you all how to make sunny side eggs on my YouTube channel. We're going to take what we learned from that video and apply it to this sandwich. People want to make restaurant quality sunny side eggs how the hell do you do it you crack the egg and you want to crack it open as close to the pan as possible so there's minimal splatter and get it into one section so that when it hits the hot surface boom you know and if you cook all your greasy stuff first like your burger your sausage and your bacon all that grease is going to help keep your egg from sticking to the bottom of the pan ah 
There is a method to his madness. Now with bacon and and pork, you want to make sure it's cooked all the way through, just for sanitary reasons. I mean, you can get away with beef being a little bit more raw in the middle, but with like pork or sausage or, you know, bacon and shit like that, you want to make sure it's cooked all the way through. That's kind of a weird thing about life, if you ask me, like how one thing can be, you can get away with like eating steak and beef raw, for instance, but you can't get away with eating bacon or pork raw. Weird how that works out. Now, for those of you on a diet trying to watch your weight, this is not a heart-healthy burger. This has got bacon, sausage, burger, egg, and a shit ton of cheese. So... <coughs> But I tell you what, it's good. I'll give you that. First time I made it, the burger, the first time I made this burger, the sausage patty fit the entire width of the burger patty, and it was too much, and it didn't cook all the way through, and I ended up eating it so I wouldn't waste it. But by the time I got done eating it, I'm like, you know, this burger is so fucking good. I gotta do a recipe for this on YouTube. How do you know when your sausage is cooked? Usually on the outside you'll get these uh, white spots right here. You start seeing it shrivel up and shrink. Sizzle and cook. See how it's starting to cook up on this side? Yeah. Oh yeah. And that sausage will be pretty much done by the time it looks like that on the other side. You feel me, YouTube? I don't want to squeeze too much of the juice out, but it helps speed it up a bit. Oh, man. The smell coming off of this, man. My stomach's getting all excited for this, man. My stomach's like, yeah, get it. Well, that side's almost done. Let's check it out. This side right here is almost done. for a bit longer. I'm flipping it a couple times so that way you can see for sure what good fully cooked sausage looks like. Interesting, like I said, how you can get away with eating steak raw pretty much for the most part. You can get away with eating hamburger raw for the most part. But you don't want you definitely want to eat and cook hamburger. Like what I mean by that like you can with steak and hamburger, you can cook it and have it medium rare to pretty pink, but not like too pink and be just fine. You can't eat it completely raw, obviously. But with pork products, you want to cook them all the way through. With chicken products, you want to cook them all the way through. Oh yeah, that's done. Let's be quick about it. Okay, so it's just about the same size as the patty, not quite, but that's big enough for a sandwich. That's looking good. Uh, if you're if you're vegan, then you shouldn't watch this video because I'm putting meat on this burger. That might trigger you. Like, how dare you? When vegan food is way more expensive than regular food and the byproduct it costs to make 
that more expensive food is harmful to the environment. Not to mention you two. The biggest argument that vegans make is you shouldn't eat red meat because it can kill you. And it can also, you're also harming a fucking living thing. Well, what the fuck is uh, a plant then? It's a living thing. How about that? I'm going to take two strips of thick cut bacon, tear them in half to make four miniature slices to put on top of our burger. Boom, shakalaka. Make some room on the pan here. There we go. Excellent. Now we got all four slices ready to go. Now the same thing that we did before with the seasoning. We're gonna hit it with some seasoning so we don't have to move the spatula. There we go. All that bacon is sizzling. Just a little bit of Tony's on the bacon. I'm not putting a whole lot on here, just a little bit for flavor. We get closer to that action. There we go. Now we're going to bake and season it up, lightly seasoned. We're not going to need all this for the fucking sunny side egg. There we go, there's a little bit left of that egg. Now I'm going to move this back over here because we're, we're going to need that here shortly. And while that bacon is sizzling up, we need a top bun more assembled. Now the only thing you're going to need to put on your top bun for this sandwich is Frenchie's spicy horseradish mustard and some mayonnaise. The bacon's not ready to flip. Let's give it a flip. Over here for our top bun, we're going to add some mustards, spicy horseradish mustard right there on the top. I like mine with a little bit of heat, so I want to add a lot. There we go. The bacon's looking good. Walk back over to our trusty fridge, put the mustard back in the fridge. And then we'll take a fork and do a dollop of mayonnaise on there and just mix it around with that mustard. Gonna need two hands for this. That's what she said. Oh. Got some best foods real mayonnaise. And you don't want sauce stripping off this burger too much because it's already going to be extremely cheesy. So maybe like a little bit more mayonnaise on the top there, but not too much more. There we go.
Now what I'm gonna do now while that bacon's cooking up is get a close up of that. Looking all kinds of delicious. Take that fork and kind of just mix the sauce together on the top bun. I'm mixing the horseradish mustard with that mayonnaise together on that top bun. And I'm just kind of spreading it nice and even all over that top bun. There we go. My fork can go in the sink. Okay, our top bun's done. We'll worry about that in a second. Back over to our bacon. That bacon's almost done. A little bit on the crispy, a little bit on the chewy side. I'm going to strategically pay it, place the bacon on top of this sausage. Shite. If it hits the plate, no big deal. Just pick it up and put it on there. This is a very tiny plate, and I'm trying my damnedest not to get grease all over the stove. So it's literally like building a work of art. An eatable work of art. So some bacon's a little bit crispy, some that's a little bit chewy, whatever your preference is, it don't matter. But you want to evenly distribute the bacon on the sandwich here so that, there we go, just like that. Now what do you think of this so far, YouTube? Up to this point, if you're not getting hungry watching this, then I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. And look at all the grease we got at the bottom of that pan, just from doing the bacon, the sausage, and the burger patty. Now what's breakfast without at least one egg? Am I right or am I right? Alright, so we grab an organic egg. Organic cage-free egg and whoop. Who's going chicken hunting? We is going chicken hunting. Who's going chicken hunting? We is going chicken hunting. Perfect amount of seasoning on that egg. Now what I'm doing right now is making sure that the edges as they cook up don't stick to the pan. So I'll tilt the pan forward so all that grease cooks underneath the egg while it cooks. Now tilting this large pan so all that bacon, sausage, and burger grease cooks underneath the sunny side egg just like that. Beautiful. And now that's nicely formed right there, let's get a close-up of that action. Let me wash my hands real quick. There we go. Make sure that bacon is perfectly adjusted. Get a nice, there we go. Get a nice weave of bacon going right there. That weaves perfect. Now here's that sunny side egg cooking up. You can see it getting nice and firm. And to make it over easy, all you gotta do is wait for the top half to be done cooking and nice and firm before you flip it over. If you try to flip in the egg over when the top half's not done, 
then it's going to break your yoke as soon as you try to uh, make it over easy. And you can see that the, the yoke is getting nice and white. It's getting a, a little bit jiggly. That's the perfect time to flip the egg, just about. Three out. And to make it over easy, you are simply going to flip it at just the right time. And right here, it's just about done getting nice and white. You want the yolk to be nice and firm and jiggly before you flip it. Give it a quick flip. Beep. Now I got the top half cooking in all that grease right there. I don't go too long on the top half, just a little bit to, you know, cook it up at least. And look how easy that comes off of the grease. Boop. And there you have it, one over easy egg for your burger recipe. Now we're gonna flip back over just like that. Let's just set the camera down. So I can hold that bacon down on and use my hand here to scoop the egg onto said burger. Go ahead and turn the stove off at this point because you're not going to need the stove for the last portion of this burger recipe. So I'm going to squish and level that bacon together just like that. That's going to look nice. Okay. Now at this point all your cookables are done. The burger is just about done. Now the one thing it needs is cheese. So, I'll set this to the side for just a second. So to put the cheese on this delicious ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger, one second. We're gonna take some Swiss cheese. Now, not one slice, not two slices. Not three slices, but boom, four slices of Swiss cheese. Just like that. Last time I did this, it didn't take long for the cheese to melt in the microwave, so I'm taking over the microwave here and put it in here real quick. Now this is the only time you're going to need the microwave for the, any of the burger recipes is to make the cheese nice and gooey. Alright, time cook. Let's do... 44 second burst and what that will do is all that Swiss cheese on the top is going to melt on top of our sausage, egg and bacon and all that good stuff right there I mean I tried setting the top bun on top of it when I melted the cheese and the top bun just slid off so no, it's easier just to do it like this. And that cheese is slowly but surely melting all over that bacon and beef and sausage.
Hmm. I see that cheese melting. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little bit longer. Let's see, let's do uh, 24 seconds more. About 24 more seconds should be enough. I want it to fold. I want the cheese to melt and fold to the burger, but I don't want it to dangle all over the place and make a huge mess. Oh, well, see, now that happened, didn't it? The fucking cheese is sliding off. <laughs> God damn. The cheese tried making a run for it, YouTube. I'm like, nope, we can't have that. At four seconds left, too. Well, shit. Go ahead and turn that fucker off. I guess the cheese is pretty much melted at this point. Let's get a better grip on that plate. Now, for the sake of not getting cheese all over the plate, I'm going to make sure that all this melted cheese that we just put on top of here is positioned just right. So there we go. It's nice and gooey. You can see it coming off right there for the most part. Look how stringy that is. Oh, that is beautiful. Mmm. Now this right here is the perfect melted temperature for the cheese. It's got a little bit of solid cheese on the top to give it some consistency, you know. But now we're going to put our top bun that we just made on the top of this here burger. Oh, 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 look at that. Oh, YouTube, that right there is the ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger. Let's get a 360 of that. This is how you start your day off. Now, all the grease from the patties has literally soaked into the bottom bun, so I'm going to have to find a way to flip this without disturbing the sandwich so that I can pick it up later and eat it, or at least eat it in this video. So... The best way to do this is to take the same spatula you just used and to very delicately pick it up from the bottom bun. Just like that. At least get it loosened up so you can pick it up and eat it. Holy shit, this looks messy and deliciously good. There we go. Instead of trying to flip it, I'll just get it unstuck from the grease on the bottom of the plate. Oh, that just looks fucking amazing. I'm gonna go set this down. Mm, magnificent. Well, YouTube, it looks like King Carboy just made another dank-ass sandwich. This here is the ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger brought to you in part by King Cobra JFS with another episode of Cooking with Cobra. Hmm. Oh, shit, there's no one on Discord right now. How about that? Got a lot of positive feedback. People said I did really good on this episode of Keeper Cast, so that's what's up. I want to lean the camera against my spittoon so he can see me eat this monstrosity. So, this behemoth of a cheesy, gooey mountain mess is the ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger. Now here's a challenge for you on YouTube. Can you eat this entire thing in one sitting? I'm gonna sit it in my lap and try to contain most of the mess 
onto the plate, but no guarantees. And if I make a little bit of a mess eating it, that's all right. Sometimes burgers get a little bit messy. But what do you think? Does that look good or what? Yeah, cooking with Cobra. Boom. I mean, trying to pick it up, I probably could do it. I just have to be very delicate with it. You know, and pick it up without without it falling apart. Hot. Who we? There we go. As soon as I flipped it over in my hands, all that grease is on the bottom bun. Holy shit. Now that's a sandwich, YouTube. You want to eat like royalty? This is how you do it. Mm. That first bite, though. That's how you can tell it's a good burger. Look at all that grease dripping down my arm. Yeah, buddy. Here's a little bit of that cross section right there. All that steam coming off of it. And that cheese pull. That's a sexy burger, YouTube. Mm. How long is this video? 48 minutes? There we go. There we go. Cheese pull. Mm. Massive cheese pull. Massively good on the flavor. Mm. But get a little of that massive cross section, yo. That is wicked. I don't know if the camera can pick up on the steam coming off of that freshly cooked deliciousness. Oh. The sausage is cooked all the way through. Excellent. Mmm. Okay, wasn't quite cooked all the way through, but it's not completely raw, so I should be all right. Because it's just a little bit of pink in the sausage, but it's not too bad. Actually, yeah, that sausage right there is pretty much cooked all the way through. Cool. Mmm. Like this right here is a burger YouTube. This right here. Like there's so much grease on the plate. There's a shit ton of grease dripping down my arm. <laughs> mm. Like if you have time to make this in the morning and eat it for breakfast, I guarantee you, you're starting your day off right. This sandwich is mm, delicious and very filling. <coughs> and definitely not exactly nutritious, but who cares, right?
hooey. And just the right amount of seasoning on that burger too. It wasn't overdone. The heat coming from the seasoning and the heat coming from the horseradish mustard and the heat coming from the Jimmy Dean spicy sausage. Nicely balanced YouTube. What's harder the spiciness no nah, I'll tell you what's harder it's fresh off the stove so mm. these burgers are way better when they're fresh I'll tell you that right now I'll tell you what, YouTube. <laughs> this is better than any fast food restaurant you're ever going to eat. <laughs> I mean, buying the ingredients to make it yourself. I mean, if you're going with mostly great value products, you can save a couple of bucks. It ends up being a lot cheaper than going to fast food restaurants and eating. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm down to the last couple of bites of it, and I'm just like, oh. <sighs> that was a burger, YouTube. Not too messy, but a little bit messy. Got some grease and some mayonnaise on my hands. Mm. I mean, here's the plate. That's just, yeah. The plate is, yeah, I'm holding the gr my hand underneath the plate so you can see. Hey, look, at there's grease dripping off onto my hand. Legitly, that's a greasy ass burger, but that was delicious. You see, now that's what's up. I got the mess all over my pants, but not on the floor. Cool. Wash my hands right quick, YouTube. Get me some water or some milk to drink. Actually, that had a lot of protein in it, so let's go for a glass of milk to wash that down. Now, that was pretty, uh, that wasn't not, not exactly a low sodium type sandwich, mind you, but with the eggs, the bacon, the sausage, and the hamburger, that sandwich was just packed with protein. You eating that kind of shit before you hit the gym, you be making those gains. It don't matter what you wash down your burger with. You can wash down with beer or soda, but I'm out of those things. So just for the sake of having protein, 
I'll wash it down with an ice cold glass of whole milk. Fuck that nasty skim milk bullshit. It ain't real milk. You need calcium and protein for your body. That's all I'm getting at. Booyah. Pour it, pour it, pour it good. Now the question I ask myself is why isn't that in a restaurant somewhere? The smell waffling through my apartment is just glorious YouTube. Simply glorious. So since milk can build strong bones, hmm. drink it out of a cup that has skulls on it. <laughs> well, that's how you make. <clears throat> that's how you make the uh, ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger. And in other news, I was on Grand Theft Auto V online just recently, and I did a mild touch-up to one of my death matches. If you still play Grand Theft Auto V online on the PS3, or if you still have it, some people have played on the PS4 or Xbox, but... I created a deathmatch I call Clock Tower of Terror. And originally I called it the Tower of Terror, but Disney already has a ride in their park with that name, so to avoid copyright infringement in hopes that my deathmatch might become Rockstar North of Verified, I changed the name to Clock Tower of Terror. And the forced weapon is the minigun. Um, but there are other weapons too, not just the minigun. But the description reads, mini guns surround the clock tower. There are other weapons too besides the minigun. There's shotguns, pistols, you know. And surrounding the deathmatch, I put various jumps for vehicles and exploding propane tanks in between the jumps so that if players are wreaking havoc on a deathmatch and if they were to like say jump on one of the jumps when the propane tank is shot it explodes and it sends the car flying several feet into the air there's a particular area of Los Santos where you can climb up right next to a clock tower and I wanted to make a kick-ass deathmatch surrounding that clock tower and I did just that however I called it the Gatling gun instead of the mini gun and that's not an accurate description well it's kind of accurate and kind of not a Gatling gun was created during the wild wild west the mini gun is like the grandchild of the mini the, the mini gun is basically the grandchild of the Gatling gun if that makes any sense so making sure the description was more accurate and, you know, the name of it sounds better too. Now, oof, yeah, it's almost midnight, so I'm not going to be doing Grand Theft Auto V just yet. Pushing it kind of late with the cooking video, but tomorrow I'll be doing a YouTube video playing that deathmatch again. And this time around, I'll have a spot for the camera, so that way I can prop it up, and that way you can watch me play. And, of course, if I can set up recording from my PlayStation 3, 
and it just records directly to YouTube. That'd be sick. Which sounds like something you could do. I mean, if I could record directly to YouTube from my channel, that'd be a little bit easier, but... Hmm. Now you'll see me roaming around Grand Theft Auto V wearing one of those plague doctor masks that the doctors would wear crossing the uh, waters in Italy to that one super haunted island that has the abandoned insane asylum on it. Oh yeah, there's a haunted asylum on this island over in Italy and this island is so freaking haunted that there's several warnings from the government and ironically enough the island of that asylum it sits on also features a bell tower attached to the island I mean if I could have the bell from that tower that'd be pretty sweet I kind of wonder if like removing the bell from a tower that's attached to a haunted asylum and that has history behind it, would that upset the spirits? Would the spirits then, you know what I'm saying, would they like, I don't know. Would they start haunting your location because a piece of that building is in your possession? So would they, would they haunt the location it's in, you know? Hmm. But you can only imagine having a bell from a haunted bell tower in your possession and with legitimate record of it showing that it belonged to the place you know and that sort of thing which should be cool as fuck but that can attract a lot of spirit energy to your home and some of the ghosts that haunt that asylum in particular you know, because the island has a history of bubonic plague victims. And then once the bubonic plague had passed and everyone had died on that island from having it, then the, that burial site was used for grounds to build an insane asylum. And the combination of those two things makes this island in Italy super fucking haunted. Like, you don't even know. It makes the Stanley Steamer Hotel in Colorado look like child's play in comparisons. To put things into perspective, and when you have that much energy condensed into one area, it's, you know... No, I walked into a graveyard where like 200 plus of my family members are buried. And as somebody who practices a spiritual belief, you could say that for a ba better lack of better terms, I guess. When you walk into a cemetery that has a lot of your ancestors buried in it, you can just feel it in your bones, man. Like, that's unreal undescribable feeling like you know if you're in tune with the energy and mother earth and that sort of thing you can just feel it and it's like whoa dude and nothing says delicious like a satisfying bowl of cherry pipe tobacco courtesy of 
cult blood red moon pipe tobacco sort of like dessert after having a delicious breakfast burger not just any breakfast burger that was the ultimate breakfast burger and look at that's the ultimate way to get your day started night whatever and the thing of it is it doesn't have to be breakfast time for you to enjoy that you can make that burger any time of the day you want provided you have the ingredients and the time to cook it Mm. Holy shit. I managed to squeeze that entire thing down and oh man, I am beyond stuffed right now. That was ridiculously filling. Uh, like I said, if you don't like spicy, then you get like a regular mustard and a non-spicy Jimmy Dean sausage to go on your version, I guess, but... I like a little bit of spiciness, so that's why I added the spicy ingredients. But the only two spicy things on that was the Jimmy Dean breakfast sausage and the spicy horseradish mustard. Which, I guess if you're a fan of horseradish, then you'd like that, but I don't know. Some people are going to look at that burger and be like, that's just fucking gross looking. That that was actually pretty normal compared to what I usually make on my channel. I mean, the sushi, pizza, nachos were delicious, but that was definitely a little bit out there. Not enough wasabi for those nachos either. <laughs> Of course, now that I'm out of cigarettes, it helps to have a pinch of pipe tobacco stacked up. So this video is almost an hour and eight minutes long. But a minute, like, an, like seriously, I've been on this camera for a minute making this and this has turned out exceptionally well. Like, this is a cooking video that went together nicely for a change. That's what I like to see. So I don't mind if the video is like a minute, more than a minute long. Like, if it's an hour and eight minutes long, you know. That's good quality cooking video right there. Now, I do apologize for eating funny, but that would be the cook's privilege. And the cool thing about cooking your own food is you get to eat it. And upon examining that stove after I got done cooking that meal, hardly any grease on there. Yeah. Oh, especially if you're cooking greasy things like beef, sausage, and bacon, and you're trying to minimize the mess, so to clean up the breeze and you know, cooking can be fun, but it doesn't have to be stressful. And to make it less stressful, to make the cleanup less stressful, little tips and tricks like cracking the egg open closer to the pan so the egg doesn't splatter and just destroy your sunny side egg completely. You know what I'm saying? Versus, you know, when you flip your burgers or your bacon or your sausage, making sure you flip it close to the pan. So the grease splatters on the inside of the pan and not all over your stove. I mean, like I said, you're not SpongeBob SquarePants, so why are you trying to flip shit? I mean, maybe if you're outside on a grill and you wanted to show off and it was nice outside, okay, I get that. But if you're cooking burgers indoors on a stove and you want to minimize the cleanup after you're done eating, then the techniques I demonstrated in this video are perfect techniques for that. Hmm. 
This pipe's a little bit clogged. Hold on a second. Yeah, that Colt Blood Red Moon Pipe Tobacco. I'll give them some free advertising, too. Some of the best cherry pipe tobacco I've ever had. As a pipe smoker, I would recommend Colt Blood Red Moon Cherry Pipe Tobacco. That's if you like aromatics, I suppose. There are some pipe smokers who are like, oh, that's kid stuff. I want a non-aromatic. And the, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, you know. I'm not too particularly picky when it comes to pipe tobacco. If it smells good, it tastes good, it's got a nice nicotine punch to it. And yeah, you know. And above all, if it's a cool smoking experience and it doesn't bite the shit out of my tongue. Tongue bite sucks. You're enjoying your pipe, you're sipping on the tobacco like a fine wine, it smells good, tastes good, and all of a sudden, your tip of your tongue gets hot. And you're sitting there going, ah, oh, what is that? I've noticed that cheaper pipe tobaccos do that, if you're not careful on what you're buying. But Colt's Blood Red Moon Pipe Tobacco has no tongue bite. It's a cool and very pleasant smoking experience. And not only, is it, not only is it a cool and very pleasant smoking experience, but the aroma coming off this pipe smells delicious. This is good pipe tobacco. Great for year-round smoke, you know what I'm saying? You could smoke it af after dinner or before dinner or whatever. Or if you're at a hot rod show and you're smoking a pipe and you got cherry pipe tobacco going and it just smells so fucking good. People notice, they're like, hey, that pipe smells good, Saunders. <laughs> Goddamn right it does. But no, that burger wasn't exactly heart healthy. The sodium on that was probably ridiculous. But because that burger was already high in cholesterol with the bacon and everything else, that's why I didn't go too heavy on the seasoning. Now, a little bit of that seasoning went a long way. Like, that burger came together beautifully and the layers I could taste every flavor individually and then it came together like food does and the reason why they call it culinary arts is because it's a work of art that you can eat it's not only art you can visually see with your eyes but it's art you can smell and taste and savor you know what I'm saying and uh, you don't have to be a a five-star chef to make delicious ass burgers I mean if a simple autistic like myself can cook a burger like that then so can you and that's basically how you do it I mean, nothing to it it's not exactly rocket science now if you got a girlfriend coming over for a date and she likes burgers she likes eggs sausage <laughs> pervert no, but if she likes those things that I put on the burger, then chances are she'll like that. So, you know what I'm saying? So, when I learn with my cooking, you also learn with me. And when I discovered great recipes, they must be posted. I mean, if you wanted less spicy, like I said, switch over to, you know... But you can definitely expect a Grand Theft Auto V video coming up on my channel here shortly. Perhaps later on tomorrow when it's a bit more appropriate, even though it is a Friday night, you know. The fun of playing Grand Theft Auto V is being able to hear the sound effects and, you know. I just turned on my PS3 after several months of not playing it. And it stayed on long enough for me to edit my deathmatch and perfect it. And then I started playing it again. It kept on freezing up on me. And I'm like, well, that's to be expected when you don't play it. But now that I've actually played it a bit earlier, hopefully it won't freeze up on me. And if it does freeze up on a YouTube video, it's whatever. The whole point of playing Grand Theft Auto V is to have fun killing other players and other things, you know, and doing things you can't normally do in real life. My only complaint about Grand Theft Auto V is 
it's not a bit more gory, like some Resident Evil type shit, or like Mortal Kombat, yeah. Now, if I created my own video game, it would be like Grand Theft Auto meets Saints Row. You'd be able to create your own character, and it'd, it'd be a, a bit more bloody than Mortal Kombat or Resident Evil. And you'd be able to customize your guns and all kinds of shit. And you'd be able to customize your cars, your guns, your clothing, the way your character looks. Like the details in this game. Like, and the money it would take to build something like that. Call it like Gangster's Paradise or some shit. I don't know. Get like three or four gangs you can join and like... Two of them are cool with each other, and two of them, the two, you know, they rival each other and shit, you know, kind of, yeah. I get pretty boss at San Andreas, though. They make, they made San Andreas for the PS3, which the graphics are kind of bulky and weird, but it's still playable and fun. And gangbangers start hitting on my territory, and I walk in with CJ and a couple of side-by-side sawed-off shotguns ready to wreak havoc and I take those fuckers down left and right just you know now at the moment I don't have the money for a PS4 and I'm not looking for one at the moment because the PS3 still works oh I, I beg to differ you said it froze well, to be fair, I haven't played the PS3 in months, so it's going to freeze if you haven't played it in a while. That's just technology for you. You know what I'm saying. Now, because I was cooking a dank-ass burger and because I'm enjoying a pleasant smoke on some delicious, sweet-smelling cherry pipe tobacco afterwards, it's good to have the apartment window nice and open. Letting that sweet spring rain breeze waffle in. Cause it's been raining a lot in Casper, and all I gotta say is, oops. <clears throat> uh, I carried on this video long enough. Anyways, YouTube, thank you for watching my cooking video, another Cooking with Cobra segment, brought to you in part by King Cobra JFS. Thank you for watching me make the ultimate breakfast bacon cheeseburger, and I'll catch you cool cobras on the next one.